Was Nvidia hiding something about the 4090? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a powerful online platform from which you can create your website fast and easy. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. Not only that, but Squarespace allows you to truly create an online community through the use of its powerful blogging tools, ability to display social media posts right on the website, and extensions to help you manage inventory, promote products, and streamline bookkeeping. So if you're interested in a great website creation tool and you'll want to support the channel, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash graphically challenged to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So Nvidia's RTX 4090 is about to become available very soon. And a lot of people are getting really excited because during Nvidia's GTC 2022 keynote, Jensen went on stage and showcased the 4090 as being up to like four times as fast as an RTX 3090 Ti, which is just absolutely insane. So a lot of people have been losing their minds over the type of performance that they're going to be getting out of the RTX 4090 if they do choose to upgrade to it. But guys, I think there is a couple of red flags that we need to take a look at when it comes to the RTX 4090, as unfortunately, it looks like it's probably not going to be quite as fast as you were expecting. Now, don't get me wrong. The RTX 4090 is going to be an absolutely insane upgrade over a 3090 or even 3090 Ti. However, if you are expecting four times the amount of performance and a four times reduction in latency, well, unfortunately, it looks like that's probably not going to be the case. Now, the first thing I want to go over that was definitely a red flag for me is this chart right here. Now, if you take a look on the right side, it will indeed look like the RTX 4090 can, yes, actually give you over four times the amount of performance of the RTX 3090 Ti. However, if you do go ahead and actually read the footnote at the bottom, you'll learn that, yes, this is actually including ray tracing and DLSS 3.0. And I will definitely be talking about DLSS 3 in just a moment here, as that's where actually things get really strange. But if we do actually take DLSS 3 out of the equation and we compare it to games that are going to be maybe more representative of the type of games you're playing today, those are actually going to be the three games on the very left. And what you're going to notice here is that while the RTX 4090 is definitely going to be giving you a massive performance uplift over the RTX 3090 Ti, and do keep in mind the 4090 isn't even the full die, so the 4090 Ti. AI will be even faster than this. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it's not going to be four times as fast. In fact, it's starting to look like it's probably somewhere between 60 to 70% faster on average versus the RTX 3090 Ti. And I do once again want to stress to you guys that that is an absolutely insane performance uplift. And if we we're seeing like 70% performance uplifts in something like CPUs, everybody would be absolutely losing their minds. So this is definitely something that you should not be disappointed by. However, if you are again expecting over four times the amount of performance, it's very unlikely that you're going to see that in a lot of games, at least today. And in fact, even in the games where you could potentially be seeing four times the amount of performance of an RTX 3090 Ti, it definitely comes with a huge catch. And that's what I want to focus in on this video, because DLSS 3, while it is an absolutely amazing technology, is going to come at a cost and it's not going to be necessarily the magic bullet that a lot of people are hoping it's going to be. Now, what exactly am I talking about? Well, actually, it looks like the YouTube channel Digital Foundry got their hands on an early RTX 4090 and have been doing some DLSS 3.0 testing and what they found might actually shock you. Now, if you haven't seen this video yet, I do suggest you watch the video and I will have it linked in the description below. However, definitely make sure to watch through this video first if you want a quick recap and you want to support the channel. But in any case, yeah, actually, if we take a look at the results, one thing that definitely might shock you is the latency results when it comes to DLSS 3 because although it is going to be giving you a massive performance uplift, again, it's going to come at a cost and that cost does appear appear to be the latency. Specifically, if we take a look at their first result here, what you'll notice is actually in the test chamber 14 that they went ahead and ran, it looks like in native 4K, they were getting 129 milliseconds of latency with reflex off. And then with reflex on, they were getting 95 milliseconds of latency. Now with DLSS 2 turned on, they actually got over three times the performance and they reduced their latency all the way down to 59 milliseconds, which is an incredible improvement. Then with reflex on, it dropped all the way down to 53 milliseconds 
milliseconds, which again is a decent improvement. But if we take a look at their DLSS 3 results, you'll notice that while we do get an absolutely insane five times plus performance increase over native 4K, unfortunately it comes at a cost. And that cost is once again, the latency as we can see here that the latency actually did increase versus DLSS 2. So while you're actually gonna be getting more frames per second, unfortunately it isn't actually gonna be running the game any faster. So it won't feel any faster. In fact, it'll feel slightly slower to those who are very sensitive to latency as if you take a look here, yeah, it is actually gonna be three milliseconds slower when compared to DLSS 2. So yeah, that's definitely an interesting result. However, if we move on to Cyberpunk 2077, here's where things get even more interesting. At native 4K, they're getting 108 milliseconds of latency with reflex off and 62 milliseconds of latency with the reflex on. Then moving to DLSS 2, you can see here that they actually get over double the amount of performance. In fact, over two and a half times the amount of performance versus native 4K. And they actually were able to reduce their latency all the way down to 42 milliseconds. And with reflex on, they were able to reduce it all the way down to 31 milliseconds, which is definitely really incredible. However, taking a look at DLSS 3, it looks like they're getting nearly four times the amount of performance, which sounds insane. But unfortunately, once again, at the cost of latency as this time, you're actually suffering from nearly 20 milliseconds higher latency versus DLSS 2. So that's definitely looking not so great. And then finally, taking a look at Marvel Spider-Man, we can see here that at native 4K, they're getting 39 milliseconds of latency with reflex off, and then 36 milliseconds of latency with reflex on. Then taking a look at DLSS 2 performance, we can see here that they did get a 36% improvement over native 4K, and they were able to reduce their latency to 24 milliseconds with reflex off and 23 milliseconds with reflex on. Then taking a look at DLSS 3, they were actually able to over double their performance, which looks really, really good. But unfortunately, it looks like the latency did increase to 38 milliseconds. So here, once again, we're looking at a significant increase to the latency, which is definitely going to feel a little bit worse, even though the image will look better. So overall, guys, yes, it is starting to look like DLSS 3 isn't going to be that magic bullet. Now, it is going to make your games look significantly smoother. But unfortunately, in terms of the latency, it probably won't feel a whole lot better. Now, it might depend on a game to game basis whether or not you want to use DLSS 3 as for example in Portal it looks like it probably won't matter too much if you use DLSS 2 or 3 as the latency is going to be pretty similar so in that case you might as well get the smoother looking image however in games like Cyberpunk it's going to be uh, one of those things where you might have to decide for yourself whether you want to use DLSS 2 or 3 because while the game will look a lot smoother it is going to feel slower and the same thing goes for Spider-Man it'll probably look a lot smoother but again, it's gonna feel slower. And honestly, guys, I'd say that arguably how a game feels is gonna be more important to how it actually looks in terms of how smooth it is. Now, don't get me wrong, you do want a game to look as smooth as possible, and for some games, DLSS 3 is gonna be an absolute lifesaver. However, for some other games where it's gonna increase the latency significantly, you might be better off sticking with DLSS 2 because I would say that for the most part, the biggest reason as to why we push for over 100 frames per second isn't because we want the game to look smoother, I mean, that is a positive, don't get me wrong, but I think it's more important that the game feels snappier. And I think that's a big deal that we definitely have to talk about. So yeah, guys, if you're looking forward to the RTX 4090, it's definitely gonna be a massive upgrade over your 3090 or 3090 Ti if you're running something like that. However, do keep in mind that if you're expecting a four times reduction in latency, that's definitely not gonna be the case. And while DLSS 3 is gonna be a good tool to use for many games, it probably isn't gonna be the end all be all technology. The NVIDIA was trying to tout it as, when they're showing it off on stage. So if you agree with my sentiments on this video, definitely go ahead and share this video with your friends, as I definitely think this is a good message that we should share with as many people as possible so they know what they're getting into when they're buying these very, very expensive GPUs, especially taking a look at the 4080 16 gigabyte and 4080 12 gigabyte. Those cards are very expensive for what they really should be, especially that 4080 12 gigabyte, which I'm gonna be calling the 4070, because that's honestly really what it is. They've increased the 70 class card pricing all the way from $500 to $900 now, and they're trying to mask it by using technologies like this to show that it's actually gonna be like way faster than it really will be on average. So I think it's important that we let people know about this sort of thing so they don't spend a bunch of money and then end up being disappointed when they don't necessarily uh, get the feel out of games that they were expecting. But hey, that's all I have to say on this one, guys, and hopefully that helps you make your decision when you're buying or maybe even not buying an RTX 40 series card. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think this deal says three latency issues a big deal or do you think that it's going to be good regardless let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course i'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like 
Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.